Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. I'm hoping you guys are all having a fantastic day. So, uh, as you could probably tell by the title of this video, of today's video, you could see that, yes, a cooldown is on its way for the uh, Midwest and Northeast. And, uh, you know, last time I was a little bit, the models are over-exaggerating the coolness, and it would turn out to be pretty warm. But, um, this time around, I waited, I saw the you know, the cool down, if you want to call it. I saw the coolness in the, uh, you know, coming down from Canada. I saw it about, like, a week ago. But I was just still waiting and waiting because I didn't really, you know, want to see if, want to see if the models would fall, you know, would fall apart on the idea or they would actually stick with the idea. And at this point, it seems like they have stick, stuck with the idea that there will be se several blasts of cooler air that will come. And these blasts will, uh, you know, bring temperatures to a pretty chilly standpoint. So, uh, you know, that's exciting, I guess. If you, you know, I mean, for most, I mean, the heat has been pretty miserable here in terms of uh, its effects on, on the humans and everything. And if you'd like to subscribe to this channel for more updates on the cold, the warm, everything to uh, be with the weather, it's like, I'm going to look at just a little model summary channel on YouTube. And if you want to... Uh, you know, learn about the weather as well, you could also come on here and subscribe. So continue clicking that subscribe button, it really helps this channel grow. So thank you for doing that. And uh, now we are looking at the GFS 6 hour average precipitation rate. So, uh, as of now you can see there is quite a bit of heat and you could tell, uh, ooh, you could tell that by all these lines be being basically a zonal pattern, which I used to call west to east, basically the jet stream, that's where it goes. It's called a zonal flow, and that is where the heat is allowed to expand and build across much of the Midwest and Plains and into the Northeast as well. But then notice how it starts uh, shifting a little bit, and I mentioned this in uh, my previous video, I think, a couple days ago, that, you know, there's some signs that there may be, um, in a long range, that there may be a cool-off occurring. And, uh, you know, that that's what, that's what it came to hold. You can see there's going to be some big highs up in Canada, uh, but south of them there are going to be lows, by, which is why they're going to be keeping this zonal f flow. I mean, if you look at the temperature anomalies for the next week, they're going to be, you know, pretty darn warm for um, much of the country. And these these blue ones are basically either a thunderstorm or during the night where the, uh, you know it's not as uh, it's the anomaly is not as great but still very warm and I would like to go back to um, MS LPN precip <clears throat> and so it doesn't seem like in a short range <clears throat> this cooldown will occur and that's why it's titled the long range outlook but you can see it's still zonal. I'll notice a little bit of snow across the Alberta mountains or British Columbia, Alberta. And you can see that uh, here, I mean, it just peaks. This Friday, Saturday, it just goes beyond board this heat. But you can see there's just a flow right here. There's a blocking right there, right there. And it just blasts the heat right through here and just expands. And if I were, yeah, it's just, it just, it's very warm across these areas all and throughout here. And, but then, you know, that gets put an end to it. Fairly suddenly, you could see that um, by Sunday, this is Monday, notice how this pattern shifts and how the winds are coming basically from the north and how the lines of pressure are tighter, I mean, stronger winds and they're dropping pretty quickly with this high pressure. And you can see this high pressure is now in charge. And if you were to look at the anomalies, they're pretty significant. And uh, let's go check out. So this is hour 200 out. When I first saw this, it was around hour 300, 400 hours out. So I was like, you know, it's it's most likely still going to change. And it did, you know, it obviously didn't, you know, not change. It changed a little bit, but the main theme stayed the same. That uh, you could see the below average conditions are possibly and probably going to return. Um, you could see that the, I mean, it's very, very very chilly conditions possibly with this and not you know not cold again it's july but very very well below average those colors that indicate 12 to 15 degrees below average and that just expands and this you can see wednesday july uh wednesday july 24th thursday july 25th still chilly and it starts lighting up and it does eventually let up you can see a little heat comes in or above average 
temperatures but then we could see another little blast of air you could see come through and it gets more cooled off so doesn't it does not look like as if the heat will last for uh, more than I would say a week and that's about it uh, again the CPC climate prediction center if you go to the 8 to 14 day outlook which I think is absolute you know BS that they're showing uh, 22nd through the 28th they're still showing above average um, I just I, I can't I can't stand by that and I don't you know, we'll see what their update is for today uh, but I mean they've been progressively getting worse they were right about the heat wave but unfortunately in terms of uh, this cool down they are not showing any signs of it which again it's you know a cool down during uh, July if it's not forecasted no one cares it's not gonna really impact you in a negative way the heat is more dangerous so I guess they have a point in overhyping it, you know, so people take more caution. But I think it's still not fair. And if you look at the GFS 2 meter temperature anomaly, this is like 30 models combined of, of the GFS family. There was Tropical Storm Barry and then the heat took hold and you could see around that same time from the 22nd, we see this big uh, high pressure come in and take charge and bring much below average conditions and it maintains those below average conditions for quite a while. So that could, uh, you know, be the be the start of a, a major cooldown that could last for possibly one to two weeks. And uh, if we were to go to the climate, the CFS weekly, it was showing this a little bit earlier on. And you could see it's still showing it right there. Cool conditions, right there, cool conditions. And obviously this won't last forever. It'll probably warm up, it will go back to being above average between the 12th. And it's just these cycles, you know. And it looks like after this warm cycle, we'll go into a pretty nice uh, cool cycle and then possibly into warm cycle again. But that is so far out, we'll just have to wait and see. Um, uh, I would also like to just show you the precipitation, what's to come in the 7. Oh, this is the, well, I'll show you the CFS, which don't take any of this uh, too, you know, too deeply because it's a CFS. This is a long range uh, model, so it's not that good in terms of forecasting things in the short range but you could see uh they're possibly drier more, you know it's just you know scattered but i'm telling you it's been pretty dry across uh, my area and many places across ohio indiana iowa uh illinois it's been pretty pretty dry i know the east coast has been seeing a lot of rain but here we have been definitely lacking and we kind of do need some of this rain and if we were to look at the systems you could see some bigger systems trying to take hold but still nothing remarkable i mean a little bit right there possibly some rain monday july 22nd and then once that high pressure comes in with that big cool down there's not going to be much moisture either um so we'll just have to see but at this point it looks as if they will be fairly dry for uh, the areas that need the rain and for the areas that don't need the rain it'll stay either average or even above average so let's go to total accumulated precipitation i don't know why that took me so long to find but you can see uh no ridiculous amounts of rain anywhere really uh if you're if for the long range you may be looking at this and say look at that spot in minnesota that says almost six inches well first off that's a tiny spot and usually in the and second off this is it for the next 15 days so six inches 15 days is not unheard of uh, definitely not unheard of. And if you if you were to look at, uh, say, uh, the south, it's a little bit wetter, but for the long range, it's nothing too incredible. Two to four inches, that's not a lot. A long range, anywhere you see the blue and green, that's just not a lot, lot at all. Uh, that's frankly little to none rain. And half of this probably won't even occur because it's a GFS model trying to show this to you. Uh, in a more uh, widespread fashion than it actually will occur which is m way more localized during the summer the thunderstorms than actually being widespread like the storms that are sh that the GFS is showing if you were to look at uh, the European model if you're like wondering well if the European model is showing the cooldown and uh, then maybe I'll buy it well let's see so uh heat 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 and then you could see around that same time frame doesn't show it as vividly but there is a cooldown. You could see that. If I were to draw this out, the jet stream would be going something like this. So that would bring cool air into the northeast. And I would agree that this cool air mass is more centered on the eastern part of the country, not so much the western. And if you were to look at uh, the jet stream again, you could see the European model uh, would agree 
that the, the cooldown would happen. To what extent, I would have to look deeper, and I don't want to pull up windy.com right now because that's that's I don't have like that one website that you, shows you the European model because you have to pay for that. Well, uh, there are pl plenty that you know that do show you the European model, and I, I'll pull one up right now. But it's the end of the video, and I don't think much people are watching, anyways. So, uh, you know, if you are, thank you so much for watching. But otherwise, um, I'll see you all guys in the next episode. So, see ya. Bye.